Now let's see if we can identify a couple of these parts. First of all, you have your input. So you have this 10 microfarad cap. Again, we don't want a DC voltage here because that will cause, this is a direct coupled amp, it will cause a DC voltage at your speaker terminal over here. So this capacitor just ensures that if whatever you're connecting to it, if it has some sort of a DC offset to it, it can't get through there. It will only let the AC signals get through here or the changing voltages to get through here. You have your your base stopper resistor here, it's 220 ohms, and this can be different dep depending on you know amplifiers, but this resistor will be here, but it may just be a different resistance depending on the components used and the design of the circuit. And then you have this 33K, you call that a leak resistor, and this kind of sets your input impedance of this. Now a trans bipolar junction transistor has a much higher, much lower input impedance than a JFET. So some of these you'll see them use JFETs, and this can be a very high input impedance. That will allow it to introduce a lot more noise, but it'll also put a lot less load on the input. So like circuits like this are also used in things like phono preamps, and those will have a much higher input impedance, much higher gain and put much less of a load on the on the signal because remember a phono cartridge has very very low uh, output it just it has a very high impedance output uh, same as a tape head you know on a tape player so anyway that's what that does now this transistor comes from this is for this is strictly for your feedback this one is just a class A amplifier. When you look at it, it's you have a 4.7K from your positive voltage, and then you have your, your uh, emitter resistor, and it's at 33K. It goes to the negative DC rail. And this is just setting the midpoint, the operating point of this transistor. And then you have this one here that's directly connected to the rail, and then it shares the same emitter resistor as your class A section. This, that's why this is called the tail resistor. And what's going to happen is this is going to put a bypassed voltage through here that will offset some of this voltage. So what happens is depending on this resistor here, because remember these are all current controlled devices, as you increase the output of your amplifier a little tiny bit of that will go in here, it will turn this transistor on a little bit and it will actually attenuate this a little bit. Now why would you do that? <laughs> well, that this can be used to allow the amp to be more linear over different frequencies. This isn't such a big deal with DC, but when you're talking about a, uh, you know, a frequency, a changing signal here, even if it doesn't change polarities, but if it changes you know amplitude it's a waveform because of the way these circuits are designed the amplifier can amplify more or less depending on what frequency and what this is going to do is it's going to level that out so this is going to reduce the amount of distortion and make the amplifier more linear so that's what your feedback circuit's all about. And you can put capacitors in here, and there's all kinds of things you can do to change the signature of the feedback to try to eliminate uh, distortion and make it the amplifier more linear. The other thing that can happen is the amplifier could oscillate. And again, by having this feedback circuit, that's going to really, really reduce the possibility of that happening. If you took this 33K resistor out, the amp would have a lot more gain, but it could break into oscillation. It could be really high output in the bass frequencies and very low at the treble or vice versa. It could do all kinds of things. So that's what this is all for. And you can see you have this little filter network here that all goes any all these components are very specifically chosen to put a certain feedback signature on this to make the amplifier have a very linear output so that's what this whole thing does by the time it comes out of here 
you can see it's coming off of the collector. That signal is picked off here and then it goes into what's called your VAS or your voltage amplification stage. So this little transistor here takes this small signal and amplifies it into a much higher amplitude signal. And you can see your voltage source is directly coming in to the emitter because this is a, a PNP transistor. Sometimes they'll put in an NPN transistor and it'll come in the opposite. It, it'll be the same thing, <laughs> just have different polarity in how it operates. Uh, you know, because you, if you did that, you could come out or you could use PNPs here and you'll see that sometimes. But neither here nor there, it all does the same thing. You have your Miller capacitor here. This just prevents oscillation because remember, you're, you're taking a relatively small signal and making it bigger as far as voltage is concerned. So you have an, a possibility of getting an oscillation taking place in here. So this, this capacitor kind of squelches that out. The output of this then directly feeds your first driver and it puts a, they take part of the, part of that signal and it, they drop it through two diodes and these are your bias diodes. These are called your bias spreaders. Now in this amp they're using one N4148s and they're feeding it into the other input of the other transistor. So this is your push-pull pair and this is called a single-ended push-pull or a SEP. So really this is a single-ended driver and both of these transistors are kind of moving together but they're always going to be separated by two diode drops. And the purpose for that is to keep these transistors from completely turning off. They're always going to be biased on ever so slightly. You're going to have this, this voltage here and here that's going to ensure that these are always going to be turned on. Just a little tiny bit of current is going to be flowing through them even when you have zero signal. And that prevents that crossover distortion. And you've seen my videos when we talk about that. A lot of channels talk about that. So that's what this is. And we're going to see where this is not the greatest <laughs> design for a bias circuit. Just like this is not the greatest. This is a good design, but there's a lot of improvements that could be made to make this even better. Now, these do not have any voltage amplification. All they're going to do is they're going to set up a certain amount of current that's going to be required to drive your output transistors. These big output transistors, which is these ones, are the ones that's actually going to handle the big load of the speakers. And they're, they have very low forward current gain themselves. You know, usually a gain of anywhere from 10 to less than 100. You know, maybe 4, 30 to 50. And that's all you need. And really what this is going to do is this is going to provide however many amps of current these are going to have to deliver to your speaker load. This is going to put about 1 tenth or 1 20th of that. Which is still, you know, if you're putting out you know, 50 to 100 watts here, you're still going to need a couple of watts of current to get your base current where you need it to be. And that's what these do. So these amplify the current for this, and these amplify the current further for the speakers. That's how these work. So you have an NPN driving this one, kind of like a Darlington pair here. And then you have this one using a PNP because you're actually, you want this to operate off of the opposite polarity of this one. So you have to have a negative polarity driven device, which is this PNP transistor, even though it's driving an NPN. And you can see they're using the collector to drive the base here. They're using the emitter to drive the base here. And that's one of the disadvantages of what's called a quasi complementary output section. So you have a complementary pair of transistors for your drivers, but you have a matched pair NPN for your outputs. And so this one is going to see two voltage drops 
through this emitter and then through this emitter, whereas this one is not. So that kind of causes a little bit of an imbalance, but if you do these resistors correctly, and you can see how they're kind of getting around it, this one's directly connected to your voltage source. This one goes through a 220 ohm, and it only goes through a 20 ohm here, but it goes through a 220 ohm here. That, that's specifically designed to get these to drive these outputs more or less in a balanced way. Now a lot of people get down on this design and say it's inferior and it can't, it can't be good and only the ones that use a true complementary where you have a PNP or an NPN are good. But I can tell you after working on the, an original Sansui 9090, no one will ever convince me that it's not possible to get these to work really, really well because that's what Sansui did and I'll tell you what, that's one of the nicest, warmest, best sounding amps I've heard. Uh, to this day. I mean, it's an old design, old amp. They've been around for a long time, but man, do they sound good. So, in a nutshell there, that's the amplifier that you have right here. And here's your outputs. That's these. You have the drivers, two of those. That's these, Q8 and Q10, which is going to be over here. There's Q8 and there's Q10. So, these are the two drivers. And here's your Q6 and Q2, Q6 and Q2, that's these two, and then you have your feedback transistor Q4 right here, and that's right here. That's it. And you've just split this in half, you have two of them on there, and they're identical, and that's your stereo amplifier. Now let's look at a commercially built amplifier that's similar but not the same, all right? This one is an older Pioneer. I believe this is an SX 535 or a 525, I can't remember. Something like that. It's similar power and performance to the one that, that we're working on right now. And you can right away see a few differences. Number one, the feedback circuit, as I said, is not using its own active transistor. They're not using a current source here. So this is not a constant, this is a constant current signal right here. In other words, the current flowing through these is always going to be the same, all right, through this resistor. For the most part, it's not going to vary a whole lot. And if you put an active current source in place of this resistor, it will be even better yet. But on this one, you can see there is no current source. You just have a simple Class A amplifier. You have one transistor, and you can see you're coming out of your output. This is your speaker terminal here, coming out of that through a couple of resistors, and you're coming back through here, and you're going into the emitter. This is your negative feedback, and you're doing it without a second transistor. This is the way that old vacuum tube amplifiers do it as well. You have your input section, your input tube, which could be a triode or a pentode, depending on how much gain you want on this, and they just feed back from your output transformer out to the, uh, to the cathode of the tube. That's, that's all they're doing. This is the same thing. Think of this as the cathode, think of this as the anode, think of this as the grid. Same idea. And you can see they're just raising this up above ground by a 150 ohm resistor. And you're using, up here, you're following the collector, and you have a, this is a not, this is a uh, coupled design, so you have a capacitor coupling in here, so there's a, there is a DC offset of 6 volts sitting right there. And we want to get rid of that 6 volts here, we want this to be 0 volts at idle, or we want it to be whatever voltage this divider setup is setting to bias this next, this voltage amplifier, okay, it goes into here, and then as this goes up and down from that 6 volts, that signal is added or subtracted to this bias signal on here, and you're going to get an output. And you can see that output is directly controlling your driver pair. And again, you have a very similar output section. So you see you have the NPN driving the NPN, NPN driving the NPN, and you have a PNP driving the NPN for the negative half cycle, PNP driving an NPN for the negative half cycle, 
However, <laughs> however, comma, there's 19.7 volts at the midpoint here. And the reason for that is you only have a single power supply. You see on the one we're using, you have a positive voltage and a negative voltage, and the midpoint is halfway between, which would be zero volts. Here, you have a positive voltage and zero volts. And this is halfway in between. So you have a 40 volt supply roughly, and you have about 20 volts at the midpoint. So if I hooked my speaker directly to this midpoint, like I do here, I'd be putting 20 volts on my speaker of DC and it would cook the speaker. So you can see this capacitor is in here. It's a thousand microfarad, 25 volt cap to take that, to isolate that DC from the speaker. That's what that is. So this is called an OCL or that this is called an OCL output capacitor list because there's no cap going to the speaker, but this one is a cap capacitor coupled output. So you can see that drive signal will go through the cap into the speaker and to ground. And that's, this would be a single rail power supply instead of a split power supply. Now here is a Pioneer SX450. It's the baby <laughs> SX400 series. And it is very, very, very highly regarded for what it is. For being a very low power, it's only like a 15 watt amplifier, but it's a very, very popular design. And you can see it's similar to this one again, very similar. However, there's some refinements that are in there. Um, the input section, I won't get a whole lot into that because some of this has to do with the tone control and all that. But you have your, your input once again. And as I said, remember I said earlier, I didn't even realize this until now. I said how sometimes, you know, this will be an NPN and these will be PNPs. Well, here we go. Look, PNPs, here's your tail resistor. They're driven off of a 13 volt regulated power supply. This one is being driven directly off of VCC. You see that? And negative VCC. See how they're doing that? So that's gonna help make this a little quieter circuit. In addition, you have your feedback once again. So here's your feedback coming from your speaker. Goes through an 82K resistor into the input of your feedback transistor and again, it's using the negative voltage here because now you have a PNP transistor and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to oppose this signal at a certain ratio and it's going to be controlled by this filter network. Same thing. Same thing as this one. But a little bit more refined. Now in addition, we come out of this, and as I said, because you have the PNPs here, you have an NPN for your voltage amp instead of a PNP. So there's your NPN voltage amplification. And again, you have a bias spreader, but you have this weird looking triple diode. <laughs> and this is actually called a stabister. That's a name that they use for it. It's a little diode package that has three diodes in series inside of it. And they are very sensitive to changes in current. The, the voltage drop across here will vary with the amount of current flowing through them. Well, why do you think that would be an important thing? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. In addition, they use a couple of resistors. And you see on this one, there's no resistors, just two diodes. So, and they have this jumper here. So this is a very rudimentary adjustable bias circuit. And this is gonna allow that, these two transistors to be slightly turned on, but it's also gonna allow you to have a little bit of control over where that turn on point is. So this 18 ohm resistor can be jumpered out or you can remove the jumper and put it in the circuit and that will increase or decrease the voltage difference between here, which will increase or decrease 
the amount of turn on of these transistors. So that'll change your bias just a little bit. And this, what this will do is, as these transistors heat up, the voltage drop from the, from the base to the emitter will change. Hopefully, if you have the correct diodes in here, which these are, they'll change at the same rate, equal and opposite, to how these are changing. And it'll hold the bias steady. So as the, as the amplifier heats up from dissipating power, you know, with being on, this will keep everything in check. And then as the amp cools back down when you turn the volume down, this will change with it, these will change, everything will track. Now, the next step would be to put a potentiometer here. So for instance, you could take this 18 ohm resistor out and replace it with a 100 ohm pot. Then you could take this and maybe put a 47 ohm resistor here. And then what that's going to allow you to do is have an, a, a very finely adjustable circuit. And that's going to let you set the bias of these transistors wherever you want. Now one thing none of these have is what's called variable offset adjustment. And so if something is wrong in this section back here, what can happen, or if there is a mismatch somewhere, what can happen is one section of these could be biased on more than the other. And what that's going to do is the difference between these two sides is going to show up right here. And it won't be zero volts. It'll actually have a DC offset sitting on your speakers. And since there's no capacitor to isolate that, that's a bad thing. So with these output capacitor driven ones, that's not a big deal. If you have some offset, who cares? This one, you don't want that. So some of these will have an adjustment down in here where, you, this, where this 1K is. There'll be somewhere around here, there will be an adjustment that you can actually zero this out. And, and you can adjust for any tiny little discrepancies in here. The other thing that helps is if you have VBE matched transistors on both sides, but it's not as important as you might think because of this current source. And then you can also put another circuit in here called a current mirror, which always will ensure that both transistors have exactly the same current divided amongst them all the time. So this current up here will always be equally distributed between the two transistors. In this design, technically they could be unbalanced. Even though the total current is set by this, the individual currents added up between the two could be, you know, one could be higher than the other. And that's what a current mirror would be in here. So there's another improvement you can make. We'll get into that in another video. Anyway, so this is the bias circuit for this. But other than that, you have a very similar output except you have these two resistors here. And these are current limiting resistors. And what these do is these are going to allow for a little bit of difference between these two transistors. So let's say these transistors aren't well matched. Maybe let's say the gain on this one or on this one is a little more than the other. Uh, or the VBE is a little different between them. That's not as big of a deal here because your VBE here. <laughs> but the drive signal could, because the VBE is different, will still cause more current to flow. So what these do is these, these little tiny resistors, as small as they are, they will absorb that difference and keep things balanced in here. Now you can see they cut corners on this amp. So it doesn't have an adjustable or a tracking bias circuit. It doesn't have a current mirror. It doesn't have a regulated power supply. And it doesn't have the current limiting resistors in the outputs. So I can tell you that this is a better design on paper, but what we're going to do is we're going to test this amp and see if that's really going to make a big difference or not. That'll come up in another video. So that's all I'm going to do in this video. That's an introduction to how these amps work. I hope I kept under my half hour uh, limit. And uh, if not, I apologize in advance, but this is kind of what we need to have in here. Anyway, as always, I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives. In the next video, we'll turn this thing on and see if it even works.